The annealing process uses heat to reduce the hardness and increase the ductility and toughness of various steels and cast irons. With the knowledge of material composition and phase diagrams, heat treating through the process of annealing can soften metals and prepare them for further work such as forming, shaping, and stamping as well as preventing brittle failure. In this video, we will learn all about the annealing heat treatment process, its types, applications, advantages and disadvantages in details. Welcome to James Sword Research Channel, watch the video to the end for a better understanding, like and share the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification icon for more content. What is annealing? Annealing is a heat treatment process that changes the physical properties of a material to increase ductility and reduce hardness to make it more workable. It consists of heating the material to a suitable temperature, holding it at that temperature for a certain time, called soaking, and slowly cooling it in the furnace. Annealing involves reducing dislocations in the crystal structure. The decrease in dislocations in the crystal structure of the material being annealed is what caused this shift in hardness and ductility, resulting in improved workability and altered physical properties of the material. Annealing is performed on a metal for any of the following reasons. To reduce hardness and brittleness, to alter the microstructure so that desirable mechanical properties can be obtained, to soften metals for improved machinability or formability, to recrystallize cold work metals, to relieve residual stresses induced by prior processes. The annealing process. Annealing is carried out in the annealing furnace. An annealing furnace works by heating the sample in the annealing furnace above its critical temperature, and then cooling slowly once the sample has been maintained at this temperature for a suitable amount of time. Recrystallization occurs as the sample cools down. The annealing process works in three stages. The recovery stage, recrystallization stage, and grain growth stage. Recovery stage. Recovery is a stage in the annealing process where the internal stress of the sample is relieved. In essence, the metal sample is softened in this first process. A heating device such as a furnace or oven is used for heating in a controlled and consistent environment. The furnace heat reduces the number of dislocations as the atom starts migrating in the crystal lattice. Recrystallization stage. The metal sample is heated further above its recrystallization temperature but below its melting point. Upon reaching this temperature, the sample is held for a set amount of time. The duration depends on the desired properties and metal grade. In this recrystallization stage, the crystal structure begins reorganizing itself causing new grains to form without any residual stresses. Grain growth stage. The third stage, known as grain growth increases the size of the newly formed as well as the former grains once the cooling begins. Cooling the material at a specific rate causes new grains to develop. Factors such as the cooling rate, atmosphere, and material grade determine the phase composition and the crystal grain size and growth. Types of annealing. Understanding the different types of annealing processes is essential for achieving the desired outcome when annealing materials. The common types of annealing methods are 1. Full annealing. Full annealing is associated with ferrous metal, usually low and medium carbon steels. It is a process of heating steel to an austenizing range, 30 to 50 degrees Celsius above its critical temperature. The temperature is maintained for a specific period, this is referred to as soaking, and then cooling it slowly in the furnace. The microstructure obtained is a coarse perlite with ferrite and cementite. Depending on whether it is hypo or hypoeutectoid steel, this process is used to soften materials and improve the ductility, making them easier to work with. 2. Process annealing. Process annealing, also known as subcritical or intermediate annealing, is carried out intermittently during the working of a metal piece to restore ductility lost through repeated hammering or other working. It is also performed to allow for further cold working of the metal part. In this process, the metal is heated below the critical temperature or very near to it, maintained at this temperature for a while, and then slowly cooled. In this annealing process, there is no phase transformation crystal. This procedure is frequently used in sheet and wire sectors as well as cold worked steels. 3. Spheroidizing annealing. The spheroidizing annealing process is done to improve the machinability of high carbon and alloy steel. During spheroidizing annealing, the steel is heated to a temperature below A1, the temperature at which the eutectoid reaction occurs, maintained at that temperature for a while, and then slowly cooled. The time required for holding at that temperature is about 15 to 25 hours. 
eutectoid and hypoeutectic steel such as carbon tool steel, alloy steel, bearing steel etc. are its primary uses. 4. Stress relief annealing. In this annealing process, the steel metal is heated to a lower temperature of about 650 degrees Celsius and maintained at this temperature in the furnace for some time to remove the metal's internal stress. Then the metal is cooled slowly. This process is used to reduce the internal stresses in a material that have built up during the manufacturing process. Large castings or welded constructions usually have internal stresses which are primarily the result of uneven cooling and production processes. 5. Isothermal annealing. In this process, hypoeutectoid steel is heated above the upper critical temperature and held for some time at this temperature. This is done to get a completely austenitic structure and to eliminate the temperature gradient within the steel components. The steel is then cooled rapidly to a temperature less than the lower critical temperature. Fast cooling can be achieved by rapidly transferring steel to another furnace maintained at the desired temperature. The steel is then maintained at this new temperature for a specific period and then cooled slowly in the furnace. Hypoeutectoid steel is in general not subjected to this treatment. The isothermal annealing process is applied to the low carbon and alloy steels to improve their machinability. 6. Diffusion annealing. It is referred to as diffusion annealing because, in this process, the iron and carbon diffuse with each other. In the diffusion annealing process, the steel is heated to a relatively high temperature in the range between 1050 and 1300 degrees Celsius above the upper critical temperature, because the diffusion requires a higher temperature. The temperature preservation time in this process is about 8 to 20 hours. And then the steel is cooled slowly. The diffusion annealing goals are to homogenize the composition and organization and to remove dendritic and regional segregation from the solidification process. Its disadvantage is the formation of coarse grains due to the high temperatures. After the diffusion annealing process is completed, the full annealing process followed by normalizing is done to refine the grains. 7. Incomplete annealing. Incomplete annealing is also called incomplete crystallization annealing. This type of annealing is carried out by heating the steel sample just above the lower critical temperature and then holding it there for sufficient time. Finally, it is cooled slowly in the furnace. The process is mainly used to obtain spherical perlite tissues aimed at relieving internal stresses thereby improving the machinability of the steel. Advantages of annealing. It increases and strengthens the steel's machinability and formability. It increases the ductility of the metal. It reduces or eliminates internal stresses. It enhances the metal's uniformity. It increases toughness, etc. Disadvantages of annealing. The major drawback of annealing is that it is a time-consuming procedure depending on which metal is being annealed. It can be expensive. Annealing can cause defects. Annealing may alter the properties of a metal into cases that may not be desirable.